Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another installment of our Fantasy Walt Disney World trip planning. I'm super excited about this one because it is for a family with young kids staying at the boardwalk in the winter time with a budget. And it's a trip that I've actually done with my kids. So I'm really excited to share with you my top tips and tricks for traveling to Disney World with kids. And I'm really glad that you're here. So it's kind of interesting. Well, first of all, if you don't know what we're doing, <laughs> There's now a whole playlist. Those of us that have yet to go back to Disney World since the great unpleasantness have kind of banded together and we're doing this fantasy thing where we're pretending that we're going and we're planning these great trips. And thankfully now with vaccine news and all of the other things, we can actually start planning our trips for in the future, right? So these videos have become super fun because we can really start to be specific about when we're going, where we wanna stay, and I've been doing a drawing at the end of every video uh, to pick for the next video. Now, I'm, we're gonna do it a little different this week and I'll talk about that at the end of this video. But last week, we drew for a trip with young kids staying at the boardwalk on a budget and in the winter time. I've had a ton of you ask me about why the, like how can we've done a trip with the Polly that was budget. We're doing boardwalk this week and it's budget. I'm assuming that these are DVC villas. So if you own DVC, there's no difference between, I mean, there is point wise, but you could just as easily stay at Old Key West as you could Boardwalk or Grand Floridian. And you may spend more on points, but as far as like how much money you have to spend for the trip, that's not gonna change. So it's not unusual at all and hasn't been over the years for our family to stay, say, at the beach club in a villa. In fact, our very first DVC trip, we stayed in a two-bedroom beach club villa, but we were definitely on a budget that trip. So if you're DVC, it really makes sense. For someone else, it might not. I think the tips and tricks I'm gonna share will work no matter what, but yeah, that's what we're doing for this trip. Now, we first started going to Disney World as a family when the twins were five and my oldest was eight. Prior to that, we lived in Central California. So when they were little bitties, uh, Disneyland was our park and that's where we went when they were babies. In fact, the twins' first trip there, I think they were three months old and boy, we got a lot of stairs, but you know, fine, whatever. <laughs> So now that's a little more common. Back then, people didn't really take their infants out like that, but we did have a really, really good trip. So I have a lot of experience traveling with elementary school kids. So let's pretend that for the purposes of this trip, it's that first trip we took as a family. And as I talk, I'll intersperse some pictures of my kids throughout the years. So many great Disney trips when they were little, but definitely planned very differently than I plan our trips now that they are 24, 21, and 21. Okay. So I actually don't think I've ever talked about on this channel planning for a trip with young kids. So that makes it really, really fun. So um, this is going to be like the other trips have been, a five night, six day trip. And I'm starting out with basically just my top five tips for traveling with young kids. And these are tips and tricks that I learned over the years. Some of them I learned through trial and error. A lot of them I learned by maybe doing it badly. We have had our share of Disney meltdowns. And I'm, I'm just gonna tell you at the outset, anybody who is on vacation with their family for a week, something's going to happen. There's going to be a fight. Someone's going to break something. Someone's going to get sick. Uh, someone is going to have a tantrum. It's just, I mean, your family doesn't miraculously change just because you're at Walt Disney World. <laughs> so keep that in mind. That doesn't mean the trip is a failure. And the truth is, You'll have great moments and not so great moments and sometimes all on the same day and that's just traveling with family. That's the way that it goes. So these are my five, like consider these the five commandments for traveling to Disney World with young kids. Are you ready? Number one, if you wait until people are cranky to take a break, it is too late and we have learned this the hard way. It's kind of like how they tell runners, if you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. If people are already acting cranky and tired, you have to keep in mind that when you are at Walt Disney World, from the time you are, say, back in Fantasyland to landing yourself back at your hotel room, 
even under ideal circumstances, you're talking 45 minutes. And to a five or six year old that is starting to wilt a little bit, or maybe, you know, a 35 or 40 year old that's starting to wilt a little bit, that's a very long time. So you really need to be paying attention to how much intellectually do I know my family can handle before it's time for us to take a break. And it's always better to walk out of a park smiling than to drag people out kicking and screaming. True story. Commandment number two. If you have more than one child, make one person in charge of the plan. Now, Involve everybody in the process. Like, I don't know who your cruise director is in your family. I'm the cruise director in my family. If you're watching this video, I'm kind of assuming you're the cruise director for your family. But you definitely want to have them have input during the planning process. But once you're on the ground, if you start asking people's opinions about things, y'all are gonna be a hot mess. And you've seen that family arguing, at least I have. That is, that is not, not fun for anybody. So in my family, I am the one in charge of the decisions once we are there. I have made careful consideration of everyone's must-haves. We have planned weeks and months in advance, but when an audible has to be called, you need one person, or maybe it's mom and dad together, but in my experience, it's better if it's just one person, um, or dad and dad, or mom and mom, but yeah, I'm the one who makes the call. And my husband has always been fantastic about this. He's like, you guys know the rules. Once we're here, mom's in charge. I'm like, yes, that is the best way to do it. Because obviously, if there are five people traveling, including three young kids, opinions are gonna run rampant. And if you only have one child, okay, fine. You can be a little bit more, let's do what they feel like doing. But with three, nah, that is not going to work. One person, one person in charge. I'm telling you, it will help. Number three, when one person goes to the bathroom, everybody goes to the bathroom. This can make or break your trip if you have young kids, because even though, I mean, we never went to Disney World before everybody was potty trained, like people gotta go to the bathroom. And what happens is they get very excited, they don't wanna go. So the minute one child says they have to go or one adult says they have to go, everyone goes. And this kind of, you know, the thing that parents always say, just try. I know you don't think you have to go, just try. It's a big deal. <laughs> and I'm not gonna get into the whole don't get, de well, yes, I am gonna get into don't get dehydrated at Disney. Hold on, that's one of our next tips. Number four, well, that was convenient. Train for Disney. Now this commandment, <laughs> works no matter what age your kids are or even if you're an adult. But if your children are not used to walking three miles, if you're not used to walking three to four miles, you actually, I think an average visitor to Disney World puts in like six or seven miles a day. I feel like if you train up to three where you can walk three miles nonstop, you'll probably be okay. Um, but if you have a kid and they've been in a stroller and now they're not in a stroller, but maybe they're five or six years old and you think, oh, for heaven's sakes, they don't need a stroller. Do not underestimate how much walking is there. Our very first trip when the twins were five, we were like, we don't need a stroller, that's ridiculous. I mean, they had been out of the stroller since they were like, well, probably four. Epcot kicked their butts, like the, their poor little legs. They were just miserable. So we really should have gotten the stroller. So in Epcot especially, get the dang stroller. And you know, if you rent it and you end up not needing it, it's not the end of the world. But it really, um, everyone will have a better time if children with um, shorter legs have the opportunity to be in a stroller. So yeah, but train for it. And also I would say this is true about whatever bag you're gonna carry. Um, it may seem like the best idea in the world to have everything crammed into that bag, but someone is going to have to carry it. So make sure you've walked with the bag. I know that seems like a little ridiculous or like maybe it's overkill. It's not because, hold on, Walter wants in. Walter's here. He decided to join us, sweet puppy. Anyway, um, yeah, that bag is gonna be on your back for a lot of miles and a lot of hours. So it, if you train with it, it may help you to rethink, do I really need this much stuff in the bag or could we pare down or whatever the case may be. And Number five is my favorite Walt Whitman quote. I actually have it in a wood thing in my family room. We were together, 
I forget the rest. Never forget when you're traveling with young kids that the purpose of the trip is time together. And your kids, honestly, and I can tell you this from firsthand experience, they're not gonna remember um, all the stuff that went wrong, especially if you handle it you know, with a smile and you're just kind of go with the flow. Uh, but they will remember the time spent together. And really, that's the point. Like we all love Disney, but the point of Disney is not for your child to experience Disney point of Disney is for your child to experience Disney with you and for you guys to have a fabulous family vacation. Um, I had a wonderful viewer reach out to me on Instagram and was really concerned because she was taking her six-year-old for the first time and she knew that uh, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique was not happening and she just felt like her six-year-old would be so disappointed because they'd watched videos. And I just shared with her, you know what, if you don't make a big deal, she's not gonna make a big deal. And once she's there, the beauty of the parks and everything that's going on, she's not gonna miss it unless you make a big deal about it. So just remember to keep your expectations in check. I actually did a great video about that right before everything shut down that I'd love for you to go and watch. Just about remembering that it really is about making memories. It's not about you know checking off a bunch of things at Disney that you have to do and that your children just care about being with you. Okay, so those are my five commandments for traveling with young children. Let's get into our itinerary. Now, as you probably noticed with a lot of these videos, my itinerary is like very similar from one video to the next because that's just kind of like how I do Disney. Uh, but this is gonna be a little bit more pared down. I'm making an assumption that if you're traveling with young elementary kids, this is maybe, if it's not their first trip to Disney, it might be one of the first that they actually remember. So the, the overwhelmingness of the whole thing is not to be underestimated. There is a lot of stimulation in the Disney theme parks. Um, my boys, were very sensitive to this growing up. And so what I'm gonna share may feel like not ambitious enough for your family, but I know my family and this is what they needed in order for all of us to have a good time. Uh, so Sunday, just like we've been saying, we're gonna arrive. Now remember, we are on a budget for this trip. Since we are with our kids and knowing that Magical Express is gonna go away, probably a car rental is gonna be the way that we're gonna go. Using Disney transportation with three young kids, which was our scenario, was just not good. We would use it for Magic Kingdom, but for everywhere else, having our own vehicle, especially because this trip would be in the winter time, so you really could leave things in the car, you could leave jackets you think you might need later, you could leave snacks, things like that. I mean, it could still be hot in Florida even in the winter, but uh, it just having our own vehicle and, and probably, honestly, since we live in Atlanta, we would be driving for this trip anyway. So I don't even know what I'm talking about because we used to drive, y'all. Our first Disney trips, we were really, um, I mean, we weren't broke broke, obviously, because we were going to Disney, but we couldn't afford to fly. And so we, and Scott was furloughed from his airline, so we couldn't fly for free. So we drove from Texas 20 hours. Uh, anyway, <laughs> those were some car trips. We had those um, uh, those TV VCR things that went on the back of the seats back then, and SpongeBob was all anybody wanted to watch. And so I have like the SpongeBob theme song was like seared into my brain for for 20 hours. That was that was cut quite a trip. Okay, so we're gonna drive. Let's just assume we're gonna drive. So scratch what I said about renting a car. We're driving our own car, which is really better anyway with young kids, because then you've got everybody's comfort items and all of that. On arrival day, which is a Sunday, the same as I have said in the other trips, we are not going to go into a theme park. Uh, we, well, I might have said on other trips we would go into a theme park, not if I'm traveling with young kids and I've been driving for seven hours. No, we are going to leisurely get to the hotel. Um, I will definitely be packing their swimsuits in a smaller bag. And if our room isn't ready, I will be taking everyone to the pool or maybe Scott will be taking everyone to the pool and one of us will be coordinating with the grocery delivery person. Again, if we're at Boardwalk, we're going to be in a villa, so we will definitely at least have a small little fridge. Uh, to be honest, young elementary is when we first started renting villas using, um, we would either pay cash or we would rent points before we actually bought because we realized how invaluable having a full kitchen and a washer and dryer was and that five people in any regular hotel room, even if Disney tells you they fit, 
is not comfortable. So really, I'm gonna assume that we are gonna be in a one bedroom villa and that that's the points we've allocated for this this trip in particular. So one of us will kind of coordinate grocery delivery. Hopefully we'll be able to get settled in our room. And since this is a budget trip, we're really gonna bring in a lot of groceries. Again, kind of like I said last time, uh, we'll be doing breakfast in the room. We will do, um, we always would tell our kids no sodas at meals, but we would keep sodas in the fridge at the villa. So they knew they could always get sodas. If it was a longer trip, we might even spring and do the refillable mugs, but that made it really easy when we were at restaurants to say, sorry, you don't need to get a soda. Now, a lot of the time at restaurants with kids meals, soda is included. I always wanted my kids to get like lemonade, Powerade, water, and that goes back to the dehydration issues. My kids just didn't do well with a lot of caffeine and we just didn't need that in our lives. So we probably are going to do water or Powerade in the parks. And then we would have sodas as a treat when we would go back to the room. This also worked when they were young to like, hey, we can go take a break and you can have a Coke. <laughs> See, when you don't give them this stuff when they're at home, when they go to Disney, they think that's a big deal. Another big deal for my kids was always, um, I would never buy sugar cereal. So when we would go to Disney, I would buy those little boxes of sugar cereal and oh my gosh, they would get so excited. Like that was just the biggest treat in the world. All right, so, and then we're gonna do pool time. Now, this is the other thing I would say with young kids. It doesn't matter how much money you've spent on the trip. I don't care if it's a splurge trip, a budget trip. Guaranteed, if they are younger elementary, they're gonna wanna spend way more time at the pool than you could possibly imagine, especially if they don't have a pool at home, especially if it's winter time like this trip so they haven't had time to swim. Don't fight it, just make plenty of time for it. And then if I'm wrong and your kids don't wanna be in the hotel pool, then you know, you'll know you have extra time on your schedule and who doesn't want that? Monday, so we're gonna go to the pool. We're probably, and I didn't say this, but I'm getting like frozen pizzas for the room. Like if we're on a budget, and I have done this so many times, there's like a whole list of kind of, not really cooking meals, but like cut open a bag and you know, bag salad, frozen lasagna, frozen pizza, frozen mac and cheese, a million different meals that my kids really liked when they were little that we could make in our villa. So this is gonna be one of those nights. We're gonna go to the pool, we're gonna eat in the villa, we're probably gonna get a first night treat. And if we're at Boardwalk, that probably, I mean, we can't go to Ample Hills anymore. Too soon, probably too soon. Um, we can go to Boardwalk Bakery and get a treat. You know, that's not that much money. We could get them a sugar cookie or something like that, or get them some ice cream, and that would be super, super fun. And it'd be like, hooray, we're on vacation, yay. So great start to the trip. Monday, if you've watched the other videos, you probably already know, we're gonna go to Magic Kingdom. Now we are 100% going to rope drop Magic Kingdom. Um, when my kids were that age, they were up really early anyway. My husband was the only one that didn't wanna get up, but he also knew the value of getting to the parks early. And this isn't just so you have lower wait times for rides. This is also so that it's just not as, as crazy. Now, if your kids are really easily overstimulated, I would do one of two things. I would either get to rope drop very early so that you're like in the very front of the crowd. But now that they op have opened up Main Street, that's a little bit less of an issue. But my kids hated being like in the crush of people that never went over well. So our goal was always either to be at the front of the curve or the back of the curve, but the middle of the pack was not a good space for us. So just kind of gauge that according to your own kids. But we really like to get to the parks really early. Like really early, like the first people in the parks was always, I don't know, we're weird, it's our favorite thing. So then we're gonna take a break. So we're gonna go to Magic Kingdom, we're gonna ride all the rides that, that we have Fast Passes for, if Fast Pass exists in this imaginary trip. Uh, we're gonna ride what we can. Again, remember, uh, your kids are gonna go by you as far as like if things are closed, if a line is too long or whatever. Um, if if things are on that must do list that everyone has submitted in advance, you're gonna be a little more likely to wait if that works out. Um, but yeah, just kind of gauge your own kids. And then another tip, and this is especially true with Magic Kingdom, make sure you've measured them in advance. I was gonna say measure twice, cut once, but don't cut your children. <laughs> 
You just want to make sure that they're tall enough and you don't want to get their hopes up if they're like this much shy. So unless they're like an inch past a height requirement, I wouldn't make any guarantees until you get there because that can be incredibly disappointed. My boys were always very tall for their age, so that was not an issue. Um, but then we're definitely going to take a break. Even though it's winter, even though the weather is good, my elementary age kids were not ones to be able to do a park all day. And honestly, I didn't want to do a park all day. So done by one, we're going to have lunch probably in the parks. Maybe we're just going to go have lunch back at the room. Um, and then we're going to go to the pool. And what we do next is going to depend on our kids. Now, remember I said you have to have one person be cruise director. So that's me. I'm cruise director. And what we would typically do, and, and this was like countless trips, not just one trip. We would go to the pool. We would kind of gauge what kind of time they were having. And then we would kind of say, hey, um, let's take a vote because you can do that. Who feels like we should go back to a park and who feels like they want to just hang out at the pool? Nine times out of 10, when they were little, everybody wanted to just hang out at the pool. And here is where the beauty comes out of staying at Boardwalk because you have a lot going on at Boardwalk. And during normal times, they're going to have over at Yacht and Beach Club, the uh, campfire and the s'mores, which you can absolutely absolutely participate in, even if you're not staying at the Yacht and Beach Club. Um, you could do movie under the stars. There is this beautiful grass area over there at the boardwalk you've probably seen. Um, running around that grass area is fun. You could rent a Surrey bike if you want. We've done that as a family. It's really fun, but that hill over by Swan and Dolphin, mm -mm, that will kill you. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of activity there that is fun and is not going back into a theme park. So gauge your own family, but you may be surprised at that they may just want to hang out at the resort and just keep reminding yourself we're here to enjoy time as a family not to check off things that we did at Disney I mean maybe you are that was never why I wanted to go to Disney all right so we're gonna go to bed at a reasonable time now with my kids they did not do well staying out really late typically. So we would usually pick one or two big evening activities and the other nights we were back at the room going to bed pretty much at their normal hour. And then it always was nice if we were at some place like the boardwalk because there'd be a balcony, Scott and I could hang out, I could have an adult beverage and we could chat or whatever. And it was, it was just really, really lovely. It's another reason why I love the Disney Vacation Club villas. Tuesday, we are going to wake up. We're going to rope drop again. We are going to rope drop Disney's Hollywood Studios. Hopefully, again, fast passes. If not, we will ride what we can, what they're tall enough for. Um, we'll do all the attractions that they want to do. And forgive me for not going through like attraction by attraction, but this video would be nine hours long. And I feel like you guys have plenty of resources. You can go look, you know, you can go look up exactly what your family would want to ride. Again, done by one. Now, Hollywood Studios is one of those parks where we are probably going to go back at night. I just love it at night. And if it's winter time again, they may have holiday decorations. And this is going to make more sense when I tell you what happens on Wednesday. But this is a night where we're going to stay out a little later. So since we're on a budget, we probably will have done breakfast and then lunch during our break. And then dinner that night, we will probably do a table service restaurant. Uh, this could be, for our family, that probably means sci-fi. Honestly, that is our absolute favorite. The kids love it there. And if that's the only meal that you're eating out for that whole day, it's not that bad. It's definitely a splurge, but definitely something that we would make accommodations for, probably do sci-fi for dinner, walk around Hollywood Studios, and because we're at the boardwalk, right, then at that point we can either take the Skyliner or the boat, or if they're feeling still energetic, we could walk back. That walk between Hollywood Studios and the boardwalk, gauge your own kids. It's not bad. I mean, I kind of like it at the end of a park day because you can kind of leisurely make your way back. You're not in a rush. It's a well-lit walkway. It's very pretty there along the water. If you've ever run um, Star Wars Half or the marathon, you've run along that walkway. Um, I, I kind of like it, so that is an option. The thing I love about that walkway too is it's just by the power of your own feet. You're not rushing for a bus or rushing for, oh my God, the boat is leaving. You can just kind of leisurely walk when you please and we love that. 
Now, Wednesday morning is gonna be a break morning for us. Uh, our rule of thumb when the kids were young was two rope drop days and they need a rest morning. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean they're going to sleep in, but it does mean I'm gonna maybe do a little bit more elaborate breakfast in the villa. Uh, maybe I'm going to make pancakes or maybe we'll splurge and we'll do counter service breakfast and bring it back to the villa. Uh, but this is just a more leisurely morning. If the weather's nice, might do a dip in the pool and, and just not rush. They need it and I need it and my husband definitely needs it. I've shared before that he likes Disney, but he doesn't love Disney like I do. So that break morning is, we're all gonna look forward to it and it's gonna be very nice and very pleasant. If you have, again, when you've got three kids, you might have one kid that's a little more energetic than another. You could take them for a walk around the resort and kind of explore the other resorts, whatever you wanna do. But yeah, just a morning without any plans is not a bad idea. I would say you could call it a lion, but we all know, young elementary age kids, there's, there's no lion in, that ain't happening. So then that afternoon and into the evening, we're gonna do Animal Kingdom. Especially in the winter, depending on how late they're open, I love Animal Kingdom in the afternoon and evening, and here's why. It tends to be way less crowded, and you really, I feel like, get a cool experience because there's not quite as many people in the parks. The safari is really is usually really cool during that time of day as the sun is starting to go down. It's just, in the wintertime, one of my favorite, well, it's one of my favorite places to be always. More so in December, then in August, because we know Animal Kingdom is the hottest spot on earth. But um, to have young kids there where there's just a little bit more room to run around and spread out, and it makes it a lot more fun experience, probably stay there until they close. In the winter, Animal Kingdom is usually only open till about seven anyway, so that's perfect. So maybe we will have gone in like around one and stay until seven, plenty of time to do everything we wanna do at Animal Kingdom, and then we're gonna head back to the resort. Now on Thursday, we are gonna rope drop Epcot. And uh, this is another time when I might, might, depending on the budget, splurge for a sit down meal. And the one that I would choose here all day long, you guys know what I'm gonna say, even now with the social distancing character meet and greets is Garden Grill. The food is amazing. The character interaction is fantastic and it's just a great way to start your day because you can get into the park a little early. Hopefully you can get one of those first ADRs. Everybody can get a really good meal and then you can go and do all of the things you wanna do at Epcot. And then same as the other days, if we're gonna take a break. I will say when my kids were younger elementary, World Showcase was fun, but we weren't likely to spend as much time there as we are now. Like now our family can hang out in World Showcase forever, but we don't, when they were younger, it, it, it just wasn't as big of a deal to them. And one note on that, there's nothing that says you have to go to all four parks, right? So gauge your own children's interest. If you've only got five nights, you might be better off doing Magic Kingdom multiple times and maybe you skip Epcot altogether. Maybe you skip Hollywood Studios altogether. The beauty of young kids is unless they've been a lot, they're not gonna know what they missed. So it might be better to kind of give them more access to fewer parks than trying to cram in all four parks. I know, sacrilegious, just a thought. Um, okay, Epcot, and then, um, let's see, we're doing Epcot, and then, or maybe not, you know, depending on if we decide we have to do all the parks, and then we're probably going to stay out late Thursday night. Um, we're either going to, again, go back to the boardwalk, maybe watch fireworks, maybe even do something like go over to the Polynesian and eat counter service there, watch fireworks from the beach if Lord willing there are fireworks, some kind of big, exciting uh, end to the day. We might go over to Fort Wilderness and watch fireworks from there. Um, it's just something that's a little bit different that's out of a park, but also is really exciting. And there's lots of great options to do that that are completely free. You don't have to spend any extra money and yet your kids would still have a really, really good time. So that might be fun. Friday morning, we're gonna pack up, actually we're probably gonna pack up Thursday because that's very me. Uh, we're gonna throw our bags in the car and we're gonna go to the Magic Kingdom until everybody's exhausted and then we're gonna drive home. Now, some other budget tips with kids. Um, we would love to give them a $50 Disney gift card. And this is a fantastic thing to do because it not only, and it might, maybe it's $25, doesn't have to be $50. By the way, this is a great thing to tell the grandparents to buy them at whatever gift giving occasion is before your trip. 
Uh, my mother-in-law was always great about that. But this also enables them to learn a little bit about budgets, right? Because if they have $50, they might see, and it was really funny to watch how the different kids would approach this. Like I had one that it was like burning a hole in his pocket and he had to buy something right away. But then he would be bummed because his other brother that was a little more conservative still had money left at the end of the week. And he was like, hey, how come he still gets to buy something? I'm like, well, because he didn't buy something on the first night. But that does help them learn, right? About this is how much you have and you have to budget it and you have to decide what you want. We would even allow them to use that for snacks. Uh, one of my kids loved Disney snacks, but we had a rule that you could only buy one Disney snack a day. Again, because we're on a budget and there's three kids. So if you wanted an additional Mickey bar or whatever, you could use your own personal $50 gift card for that Mickey bar. And it just, I don't know, it kind of set up an interesting dynamic where I felt like they also had a little bit more control over how they were spending that part of the budget. And we came home with some souvenirs sometimes. Sometimes people just got extra snacks, whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I really felt like that was one of the learning opportunities that was afforded to us on our Disney trips or really any vacation. It's a great way to teach kids. Other budget tips I kind of talked about in the last video, you know, using reusable water bottles, um, you know, making sure you are eating in the room as much as you can. Those types of things really go a long way. And, you know, the biggest thing I would say with traveling with young kids or really with anybody, but especially with young kids is make sure you have a plan. It is, I always say that going to Disney World without a plan is like showing up in Europe and getting off a plane and saying, I don't know, I'm just gonna wing it it doesn't really work. And you can tell from our plan, we've created pockets of space where people can wing it and decide what they want. But where, when you're in a theme park, you gotta be focused. And one person has to be directing the game plan. And you have to know, when are we eating to avoid crowds? And when are we doing bathroom breaks? And when are we going back to the room? And what's negotiable and what's not negotiable? And it might feel too structured, especially if you're used to vacationing, maybe at a beach or whatever. Whatever, but I have found it is the only way to do Disney World in a peaceful way. So plan your trip, set appropriate expectations. Remember that all your kids really care about is that they've had fun time with you. I hope you guys enjoyed this. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to take a two week hiatus from these videos because I have some other videos I wanna put out. I wanna do a couple of Disney Vacation Club videos. I have a huge giveaway that's coming up. This thing, I have been holding on to this thing forever and I can't wait to do the giveaway. So that will be next week. And then the second video, we will do our drawing for our final couple of ones in this series. I wanna do one more where I draw and then one, I wanna do like an editor's choice where I tell you exactly what I would choose from all of the options that are available. I cannot wait to see you next time. If you haven't subscribed, if you've made it all the way to this point of the video, I can only assume that you liked it because you're still watching. And only about half of my viewers are subscribed to my channel. So if that's you, would you please do me a huge favor? Consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you love this video, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Whatever you're doing, please be really good to each other. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye.